Hello, Milena University. My name is Savita, and welcome to Haiti. <laughs> so everything that I thought I wanted in life, all those dreams and all those things, like I was focused on retiring early, like I was going to be doing well, like I could get everything all paid off. And I had the technical mindset of success and I was going to be finished. And um, it all just did not feel right. When I got to the point of when I was in a relationship that was really secure and I had a job that was pretty secure, I was just not happy with the life that I was living. I was not as successful as I thought. And when my fiance broke up with me at that time and my life just went through this other collapse, then when she broke up, I started doing whatever I wanted to do. Because, you know, since I've lost her, I just wanted to jump into the world. And so when I jumped into the world, I found that I went to Hollywood and I was being trained by a professional artist. I was becoming a medical artist and I could do this for the rest of my life. I started becoming very TikTok famous or whatever it is that you say. And when I, when I started getting all of this other stuff on the background, I still felt empty. And so the backstory of Haiti, one day I got a call, Tim Cleveland, Annika Cleveland, they came to Haiti to prepare and to start an OMP place. And Tim and I had a discussion about him leaving Haiti because the president was assassinated. And once he told me that he was leaving, I knew that I had to go there. So during this time, my spiritual life, before I got here, was really focused on mental health and actually increasing my ability to connect with, with God um, here has been actually pretty intense. So even when I got here, I felt like, I feel like I don't belong because when people ask me like, about God, about prayer and stuff, I literally believe it's just because my parents were praying for me um, more so than me. I do those uh, occasional, like help me God prayer. I never had that you know, running thorough desire with like connectiveness towards prayer. And I feel bad for saying it, but I'm just going to say honestly. And sometimes the most honest thing is, we'll get you back into the place you should be. But now I do pray. I pray in thanksgiving. I thank and I do not ask. When I was little, my kindergarten teacher told my parents to give up on me because I'm, I'm too stupid. I'm not going to be anything. And so I wasn't going to make it past eighth grade. I was bullied from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. Um, and I just never did well ever. But my dad, when I got into high school, my junior year, he told me, Tavita, I've been fasting and praying for you every Wednesday and for the family, every Wednesday ever since you were born. So to me, I go, yeah, sometimes it seems that your prayers are not going anywhere, but we watch, we see. Well, we're not dumb, you know. We, we look and we see the reflection, which is the parents, the adults. And as we get older, we will recognize the sacrifice, but we'll also recognize what God has done in your life. And that reflection is what we will want too. And so that's what I would say. I would say, keep on praying, keep on fasting, do whatever you need to do in order to let God know that you're thinking of us, like our, your children. And because I cannot thank my parents enough for praying for me, because that discipline has reflected on the family, and also it, it reflects on me too. And I'm here because my parents believe solely in God and been praying for me, even though I was doing what I wanted to do, and my parents just continued faith.